So do, do, do that, John. Talk yeah. just a little bit about how you've got this thing started. I, I think I've, I've heard the story, but I want people listening yeah. to really hear because people really like to. I know it's like, nah, you know, no big deal. It's how I got started. But it, there's so many people out there right at that point of deciding should they get started. So let, let them hear what that feels like. Yeah, absolutely. So for me, it was pretty easy. I, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur. I was that kid that was pushing the lawnmower at 11 years old. You know, selling lemonade on the corner, right? And that's you know, all of us, right? That's right. <laughs> I, I, well, exactly. And I think you know, at a young age, I understood the value of a dollar because I worked hard for it. You know, I was sweating and pushing a lawnmower, right? Um, and I worked at IBM uh, for ten years, and I was in sales. But I really love deal making, and so I would take my bonus money because I was in a sales job. And at IBM, if you perform, you know, you get bonus checks. And I started buying real estate as a hobby. It was purely a hobby. I, I had this idea. Uh, I have four children, and I thought, well, I'll just go buy one house per child, and instead of investing in like a college investment fund, the, the fund in my world would be a rental house. And so I bought four houses. And very quickly, not only did I enjoy getting out looking for deals to buy, but other people I knew said, hey, go find me a good deal on a house, uh, but I would like you to manage the renter. And a new business was born. And so I can honestly say I started my company as a passion that I have. Uh, and today, we've got, I started at zero uh, assets, and now we manage almost 2,500 assets in, I don't know, six cities and five states. So and what are you running? Pro- just to scale. So, yeah. What was you? You know, I'm gonna embarrass you a little bit. Sorry. But what was your revenues your first year? Yeah. And what were some of the issues oh, gosh, as you were yeah. getting started? You you bounced up against. I mean, our revenue started at zero, right? <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, how did you? You were fully yeah. employed. Yeah. Well, I mean, I worked at you know, I worked at IBM and was sort of a weekend warrior, uh, you know. And there was no conflict of interest between sure. technology and real estate. So my my IBM management team they had no problems. Right. I was doing it on the weekends. But eventually, my business business started to grow where I couldn't – you can only really have one master, right? I mean – Yes. So I, I saw the I've been married the to her wall. for 38 years. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe two. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I – you know, my business had finally grown where I had enough sustainable income where I could still be a responsible husband and father and take care of my family. And, you know, no one's ever going to bet on you but you. Mm-hmm. I think there's something important to that. And no one's going to take any risk on you but you. Um, and so I took a risk on myself and said, you know what? I've, I've, I've been making a little bit of extra money on the side. If I had all my time to dedicate to this business, I, it would grow. And we're a multi-million dollar revenue company um, and have been the last several years. Inc. 500. Yeah, we, yeah we've been one of – for three years in a row, we were listed as one of America's fastest growing privately held companies. John, talk a little bit about your growth pattern because uh, obviously you know that's what I do for a living is yes. help people buy and sell small businesses. Here and he I've, goes. Here he goes. And, and I've, I've enjoyed watching how you've done this because it really is sort of this new age modern way to grow the organic growth is harder and harder to do it is. so talk about how you you your growth pattern well and i think there's you know i will tell somebody who's listening at home um, or in the car um, that if you're looking to start a business you know buying a business and 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 this is not stumping for you, but it is in a way because it's true. I think using a responsible business broker to help you find a cash-flowing business is really critical because if you just start at ground zero, and even though I started at ground zero because it was a hobby, you know, in hindsight, maybe I should have gone and looked for a business to buy first, but I didn't. But through the years, I have purchased probably no less than five companies that do what I do in a couple different areas because it gives you instantaneous cash flow and as long as you get the right terms and conditions you can use the cash flow to help debt service it while you take the other cash flow and get employees and that's how you start to get scalability and growth. Let's let's talk a little bit about that John because one of the hardest things to do when you do that is buy inside your industry yes. sometimes is the valuation. In yes. other words, Good you point. really know what that business is going to make and right. it's not going to make what that seller's telling you it's going to make, right? Good point. So you most of the time you're paying a little bit more than you'd really like to, but there's these synergies that only you know about. 
about. Talk about that because that's sort of the sweet spot that makes it worthwhile buying an existing business inside your current industry. Right. So every seller you know, thinks their business is worth 10 times revenue, yeah. and every buyer wants to give one times revenue. Right. Right. And so it depends on, I think, what industry you're in. I mean, I'm in a service-based industry, so our contracts in my business really are a year. So I wouldn't want to give a multiplier much longer than a year because a year from now, they may not be with you, but you have to take some risk. And I think that risk is completely dependent on your confidence in yourself and your staff because if you have good service delivery, the chances are people are going to stay with you longer than a year. So, you know, I have in many cases paid two times multipliers and my clients have stayed with me five years. So that's been a good business deal. Right. right. Well, John, as you you said, you've looked at and acquired a number of other businesses to grow your business, which yep. is one obvious way to do it. Are there attributes, common attributes across those uh, other enterprises when you were looking to buy them, you were looking for to evaluate? This is this is an opportunity. No, this one's not. Yes. Yes. I, and, and for us, it's all about making sure the product that that particular business um, offers matches what we do because you can't be all things to all people. And in my industry, you know, we manage rental properties. Well, does that mean I manage apartments? Does that mean I manage five hundred dollar duplexes? Or does that mean I manage five thousand dollar executive vacation estates? You can pick a lot of different things. We have always said no. We don't want to do vacation rentals, so I don't even look at those. We've always said no. We're not going to do a lot of multifamily uh, because the rents tend to be a little bit lower. We have chosen that investor product, the guy at IBM, the guy at Exxon, the guy at you know Ingersoll Rand that wants to go buy a $150,000 house as an investment portfolio, and I can go rent that for $1,200 a month. And so our sweet spot as an organization is an average rent of somewhere between twelve dollars to $1,600. That is what I'm looking for. So if it's anything less than that, usually it's probably not a good fit for us. So when you're, you've made an acquisition for anybody that's looking to do that, was there a principle, in a sense, an approach you followed that when you acquired that firm, did you kind of stay hands off? Is that the best thing to do early on? Do you know, bring your culture and your people in to run it right away? Great question. Yeah, that is a great question. You know, I don't mind telling you, every time we have purchased a business, we have just purchased the contracts. We have not integrated their systems. We have not integrated their people uh, because that's really hard to do. And these are usually smaller firms. So, you know, we'll sunset their brand in a year. We'll sunset their website in a year. We'll start pointing their web address to our web address because these folks are selling for a reason. Either they're just getting out of the business uh, because they're retiring or they're getting out of the business because a spouse, a spouse may be getting a relocation to a different state. So they're not really interested in the legacy of what they had. So instead, we'll just sort of sunset that, and and not that our way is the right way. It's just it is difficult sometimes to integrate other people's people into your organization. So we look at buying the contracts. 